Hi, welcome back to Baking with Love. I'm Carolyn Stellatella, aka Stella, coming to you from the Peg TV Kitchen Studio. And today I'd like to share with you my recipe for coconut macaroons. May 31st is National Macaroon Day, so maybe you want to make this recipe in celebration or make it a few days earlier and bring it to a Memorial Day celebration. I like coconut, so I think this recipe is great anytime. But if you don't like coconut, you're not alone. I looked into this. It's a little bit polarizing, the taste of coconut. But according to one study, 67% of Americans like coconut, 13% dislike coconut, and 19% are neutral, whatever that means. And this only adds up to 99%, so 1%, I guess, wasn't in the study. But I thought that this was going to be a much higher number for people that dislike coconut. Maybe it's because the haters are so vocal about it. Something about the texture, I don't understand. But coconuts grow in tropical and subtropical climates around the equator. Can you guess which country grows the most coconuts? It's Indonesia. Now, I didn't know much about Indonesia before this show, but here's what I found out. Indonesia is the world's largest archipelago. That means it's made up of strings of island chains. Borneo, Bali, Sumatra, Java, or just to name a few. Uh, it's in the Indian and Pacific Ocean. It's 17,504 islands. I did not personally count them, but it spans over a distance of 3,400 miles. That's greater than the distance between San Francisco and New York. They produce over 17 million metric tons of coconuts each year. In second place, another country that's an archipelago, the Philippines. They produce about 14.7 million metric tons, and they're made up of over 7,000 islands over a 500 uh, mile distance. And in third, not an archipelago, but India, with about 14.3 million metric tons of coconuts a year. You might remember India was at the top of our charts last month for the number one lemon producing country in the world. So that's one, two, and three. Uh, worldwide, there's about 20 billion coconuts harvested each year. So let's get to our recipe and we'll find out some more fun coconut macaroon facts along the way. So before you got here, I preheated our oven to 300 degrees and put some parchment on our baking sheet. I also uh, separated some eggs, so we'll talk about that. You're gonna need a pretty large stainless steel bowl for this recipe without any rubberized or plastic parts because we're gonna need it in just a bit over a pot of simmering water, like a double boiler. So uh, you might have to test out the size of your pot with the size of your stainless steel bowl. So for our egg whites, uh, one cup is about maybe seven large eggs. It really depends on your eggs, um, maybe six or seven. And there's gadgets for this. You might see a spoon that kind of has a little slot. There's some cute animals that kind of suction off the yolk. A lot of people will use their fingers to kind of drain it. Um, I'm a bit of a risk taker, so I use the shells, which I'm not saying to do this, but I'll show you how I got my one cup of egg whites. So I usually just tap the egg, and then over separate ramekins, I will go from shell to shell, you might use your fingers a little bit, and get the white in one ramekin and the yolk in the other. Now, because this takes so many eggs, you really should save the yolks. You can use them for kind of yolk heavy uh, recipes. Uh, custards, for example, creme brulee, ice creams, lemon curd, even some pound cakes. I also have three big dogs, so I cook them up and give them to my dogs as a little bit of a treat. But we've got our egg whites, we've got our egg yolks for later. So we're gonna add one cup of egg white to our stainless steel bowl and two tablespoons of honey. Now, I, I add, use my love spoon for the honey, but this is wildflower honey. And you can use clover honey, there's even such things as lavender honey. So if you use different honeys, you will maybe taste a little subtle difference in the flavor of your macaroons. So we've got our two tablespoons of honey, our one cup of egg yolk, and now two teaspoons of real vanilla extract. I'm gonna pour over here just to be safe. That's one. And that's two. 
Now to this, we're going to add two and a half cups of granulated sugar. And then we're going to whisk all this together using my hand mixer and get it to be a nice consistency. Now, I, I don't know if you would call this a fun coconut fact, more like a public service announcement or a warning, but if you're ever on a tropical island where there's lots of coconut palms, be careful because on average about 150 people each year die from falling coconuts. That's supposedly 10 times more than the number of people killed by shark attacks. So watch out for falling coconuts. There are about 80 different types of coconut palms and some are called dwarfs. They're as tall or as short as I am. And one coconut tree can have up to 75 coconuts in one harvest, but those are the overachievers. The average uh, tree produces about 30 to 35 coconuts. And for the coconut meat that we're gonna use in our macaroons today, it takes about one year for a coconut to mature. So it's not the fastest growing crop. So this is our egg whites, honey, vanilla, and sugar mixture. And you're gonna blend that all together like this, and you can kind of hear the sugar start to be a little less granular. And now we're going to put this over that bowl of uh, simmering water that I mentioned. Let me put this down here to drip. Okay, so before you got here, I started a bowl because this has to get to the temperature of about a warm bath. Now I know that's pretty subjective, and the time that it takes will depend on how hot your water is, how cold your ingredients are, so if you start with room temperature eggs, you probably are um, going to take a little less time. But this might be 15 minutes, 20 minutes. You, you can give it a little bit of a, a spin while it's bathing, and stick your finger down into the middle to see if the temperature is warm. And again, you have to kind of check your bowl. This is nice. So warm bath water. And now we're going to take this one out and we're going to put our one that I just mixed in and this way we'll be able to continue with our recipe. So the bowl is probably going to be hot. You have to watch out that you don't scald yourself with any of the water. I think I got a good grit. You don't want any water in. Oh, it's hot. There we go. So that's our egg white and sugar mixture coming out. And here's our egg white and sugar mixture going in, getting to be that warm bath water. So I'm going to go into an even bigger bowl now. This one wouldn't have fit very well in my double boiler. But now we're going to talk about our coconut. So like a lot of things you might notice at the store, sizes are getting smaller. So when I first wrote this recipe, uh, these bags were about 15 ounces. Now they're about 14 ounces. So when you add your coconut, uh, you might just use the whole bag. I don't know if uh, your friends will notice that there's one ounce missing, but this is baking with love and we go the extra mile. So on my kitchen scale, I measured out this is about one ounce of shredded sweetened coconut. So we're going to use the 14 ounce bag plus the additional ounce. So I'm going to put this into our bigger bowl and we'll talk a little bit more about coconuts. Do you know where the coconut got its name? This is a story that I heard. Supposedly, Portuguese sailors thought that this looked like a face, two eyes, and a mouth. So they thought it was like a head. So coco was, I guess, the Portuguese slang for head. And then the Europeans added the word nut. This part, uh, when the seed, when the coconut germinates, this is where the root uh, comes out. But it's not a nut at all. It's a fruit. In fact, it's in the same family as cherries, mangoes, um, and olives, and peaches. It's called a drupe, D-R-U-P-E. D -R -U -P -E. And this fiber, when you buy coconut like this, it's already been taken out of its husk. And the husk is this really um, fibrous material. I had some strands of it 
over here called Quar. And this is great for a lot of uses. You might have uh, doormats made of this stuff. I recently saw that uh, along the uh, Atlantic coast, they were using it for erosion control. And this is what the shell looks like after you remove the coconut meat. So this is the 15 ounces of shredded sweetened coconut. And this is one and a quarter cups of sifted. I sifted it uh, with this before you got here. Uh, cake flour. Cake flour has uh, less protein and a little more starch than all-purpose flour, and it makes our recipes light and airy. I like to say fluffy. So we have our flour and our coconut, and then to that we're going to add our nice warm egg white mixture, and I'm just going to use a spatula to mix it. It's kind of gooey, which is what you want. And we needed the bigger bowl, but my big bowl would not have fit over the pot of simmering water. It's really like a cloud. I mean, this is what you want your egg white and sugar and honey mixture to look like. Okay, you can scrape down the bowl. Maybe you'll get one extra cookie out of the deal. And then we're going to give this a nice mix. Now, Coconut has a lot of uses. You might use coconut oil uh, for cooking. You might use it for skin care. It makes a great moisturizer. When you buy a coconut like this, you should shake it a little bit and hear a little bit of a sloshing sound. That's the coconut water. And coconut water is full of electrolytes. So athletes have been using it as a recovery beverage. But in World War II, in the tropics, when medics were short on plasma, they actually used coconut water as an IV right into people's veins. Uh, coconut has uh, vitamin C, it has B vitamins, vitamin E, and, some, and lots of fiber, and it also has uh, lots of minerals, zinc, manganese, magnesium, so it's really healthy, and I think like I said, it tastes great. I'm one of those coconut lovers. So we're giving this a good spin, making sure that the coconut is incorporated, that the flour is incorporated, and everything is coated with that nice egg white sugar goo that we created initially. That looks good. All right, so as much as we had to wait to make this bath water warm. Now, before we make our cookies, we need to give it a little chill. Uh, if you don't chill your dough, your cookie dough, macaroon batter, before you make the macaroons, they'll spread out too much. And you kind of want them to have a little roundedness. So this looks good. I'm gonna just scrape off my scraper. And now we're gonna pop this into the fridge. So we're gonna use our Peg TV time machine, and we're going to Use your imaginations. You can do this the night before, but we're gonna pretend this is totally chilled and take out some cookie dough that's ready to go. All right, now it's time to make our cookies. Oh, I forgot the cup of love. It's not too late, it's never too late. Into our bowl, cup of love, and we'll just give that another nice mix. We also added the love when we added that additional ounce of coconut that we mentioned, but gotta put the love in. And I use the love measuring spoons as well, so there's plenty of love in here, but you can never have too much, especially on baking with love. Okay, so now we've got our refrigerated dough, and we've got our parchment-lined cookie sheet that we did before you got here. So we're going to make our cookies. Now I have this little scooper, and it may work. Uh, it is a little bit of a sticky batter, and if you make your cookies about one inch, you'll get about three and a half to four dozen. I'll move this over here behind, behind the uh, coconuts. You might not be able to see. So you can use the scoop like this. You can use a spoon. You can use your hands. 
And again, you'll, on this size tray, I'll usually get about 16 macaroons. So we'll put four in a row. They, they won't spread out too much because you made them nice and chill. And again, you can use your fingers. It won't hurt anything. And again, if you want to just use a teaspoon, you can. In fact, I used this spoon and my hands to roll up some balls before you got here. So I'm going to just continue making our tray of about 16. Now, in between batches, I'm only going to bake one tray at a time. Again, that's the love. Um, if you put them on different shelves in your oven, uh, it's hard to really have them come out even. Top ones might not be done, bottom ones might be done. So I'm just going to put them in the middle rack for about 20 minutes and about halfway through I will give them a spin. In between, if you want to make some more um, balls, you can, but I would put the batter back in the fridge for that 20 minute time period. So we're going to take our tray and put that in our oven preheated oven, 300 degrees on the center rack. And then, like I said, about halfway through, I'd give it a spin. And then uh, about the 15 minute mark, I would start watching it a little more closely. And you want them to get to be a nice golden color on top. So in between, I'm gonna put this back in the fridge so it doesn't get too warm. That way it won't spread when we are making our next tray. And again, you're going to use your imagination and the PEG TV time machine. And 20 minutes later, here we have our tray of beautifully golden macaroons. Now, again, this is a little bit of a lesson in patience, this recipe, because before you put the, take them off the tray, it's good to let them cool about 10 more minutes. So again, we'll go into our time machine. They baked for 20, they sat for 10, and now we can take them off the tray. So you might use a spatula, or you might just use your hands to get them onto your cooling rack. And then they will be ready to eat if you want your macaroons plain. But you know I love giving you variations. Um, one variation is uh, before you make your cookies into the batter, you can sprinkle some mini chocolate chips. Or another way to incorporate chocolate into your macaroons would be to give them chocolate bottoms. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do next. So here we have 16 nice cool macaroons. Like I said, they're perfectly fine to enjoy just like this. But now if you'd like to, you can add some chocolate. So you might want to use your double, double boiler, you already have the um, warm water, to melt some baking chocolate. This is bittersweet. If you're going to do the whole four um, dozen, if that's how many cookies you get, you probably need about eight ounces of chocolate. But maybe you're just going to do half or some percentage thereof. So before you got here, I used dark chocolate, dark chocolate chips, and I melted it in the microwave. Now, instead of the double boiler, because I knew I was going to have this pot on the stove. Um, be careful. If you try to melt chocolate in the microwave, you have to do it uh, just very slowly and carefully. I did one minute at 50% power, then started to give it a stir, and then 30 second increments also at 50% power, and just check it. If it goes too far, it'll scorch, it'll get dry, crumbly, it won't taste good, you won't be able to use it on your cookies. So this looks good, it's smooth, it's spreadable, and uh, it's dark chocolate, which also has many benefits. So we're going to just take a butter knife, I'll put them on this, you're gonna get a different tray lined with parchment, and just take a butter knife and your melted chocolate, and cover your bottoms. And again, this can be as thick or as thin as you like or as you think your friends, their coconut loving friends would like. And you can just make a nice even layer from edge to edge and then place some chocolate side down on your parchment. So I'll do a couple, you get the idea. And if your, if your chocolate starts to harden up, you can just give it another 30 second microwave at 50% power. Again, 
You can make it thinner, thicker. You just need a nice even schmear around the bottom of your macaroon. We'll do just a couple more. Now, again, as I mentioned, this is a recipe of patience. Now you have to wait for your chocolate to set. <laughs> so that usually takes about an hour back in the fridge. So we're going to just do that one more. And now we're going to put these in the fridge for the chocolate to set. But again, we've got our Peg TV time machine, the magic of TV. An hour later, voila, here we have some chocolate bottom macaroons that have already chilled and are ready to enjoy. So now we'll make our platter. And you can make two separate platters if you'd like, just the chocolate ones and the plain ones. But I think I'm going to just alternate a little, mix it up, and then people that want to can pick and choose. But or if they get there late, they'll just get the plain ones because all the coconut with the chocolate might be gone already. But whether they're plain or chocolate bottomed, if you like coconut, you love these cookies. And I also found out that besides Coconut Macaroon Day, May 31st is also National Smile Day. So if you make these and share them with your coconut loving friends, I'm sure you can celebrate two in one because you're going to have some great smiles. So coconut lovers unite. I hope you'll give this recipe a try. Thanks for watching. See you next time on Baking with Love. <laughs>